that we don't want to do that. You have to eat a certain way. And once you understand how to eat properly, you'll be able to do it for the rest of your life. So tonight we're going to be focusing on maximum nutrition in our office. Now the other essentials of maximized living, they're important, they're just not the topic tonight. Recipe night, I've already told you about that. If you want to come sign up, that one you, you really have to sign up tonight. You can't just call in last minute and say I want to come. Uh, we, we want to have food for you. It's just that simple. If you want to sign up, it's important. Find time and do it tonight. That's how it is. This has been in the news a lot this week. The uh, free range eggs. And you're going to see that um, when you look at a normal chick, when they, when they uh, have their uh, eggs, they live in an environment about the same size as a shoebox. So when you buy your eggs at a grocery store, you're supporting a model where these chickens are standing on a chicken fence wire their whole life. There's no place to move. There's no place to, for them to enjoy life. They just sit there and have eggs. I think that's truly inhumane. 95% of the chickens, of chicken eggs that you get in the grocery store, they come from that source. I think we should move away from that model. Now, the articles that were in the paper last week, there was two articles and they were saying it's going to take to the year 2025 before the producers of these eggs are going to be able to change. And I kind of look at that and I say, yeah, nine years to do nothing and then one year they're going to, they're going to finally do it. That's how it's going to work. So we can change quicker. When we go and we get our eggs, we found a place where we can get free range chicks. And we can get the eggs that are, the, the, the bird is not in a cage its entire life. The bird is able to go outside and enjoy its life. But when we look at the source of our food, if we're eating the wrong food and food that's been altered, it's absolutely going to be not good for you in the long run. It's going to be bad for you. Now, this chart right here is all about nutrient density. It's all about the vitamins and minerals that are in our food. Now, the foods that are the best for you, kale, collards, bok choy, spinach, cabbage, these things have a very nutrient dense, um, they have a lot of good things for you. The things that most people prefer, french fries, cola, potato chips, they're at the bottom end of the scale. They'll still give you calories but they won't give you any nutrition. When we eat food, we want to eat food that your body can extract nutrients from it and it can help you stay alive. If you go to MaximizeLiving.com and you go into, we, there's webinars with Maximize Living. There's been a past webinar on nutritional truths. So there's all sorts of information on the internet. My suggestion is you go to MaximizeLiving.com and you get information from our sites because our site will give you much better and much more pertinent information that's uh, important to you in your life. You'll notice an apple, it truly doesn't have a, nutri a nutrition panel on the side of it, does it? See, most, most foods, all foods, they have a panel on the side of them and they'll tell you what's in there and what it can do for you. Well, the message is if they have to put that there, it's probably not good for you in the first place. The things we should be eating, they don't have a panel on it. Become a better shopper. Plan to take time. Plan your grocery list. Schedule shopping. Don't leave it. Like, can you grab that door for me? Most people, they don't plan things out. We're kind of like a restaurant at home. We plan our meals out so that we know when it comes to making that meal, everything's going to be available. So we have a pantry at home. And our pantry is just stuff that we bought, in most cases, on sale. In most cases, in advance, because they're the staples in our diet. And if we have those things, it's easy to go downstairs, find the ingredients, put it together, and to be done. But if you don't plan these things out, what ends up happening is you have to now go to the grocery store and buy things and come back. And before we know it, your prep time has been lost, or your workout time, or your Bible reading time. All those things are going to be lost because your day wasn't planned out right. So it's about planning out your day. We don't have a microwave in our house, and there's a lot of reasons why we don't, but the biggest reason is if my meal needs to be eaten in the next two minutes or cooked in the next two minutes, that I've misplanned my day. See, people try to save it at the last minute. If I just can put it in the microwave quick enough, everything's gonna be well. No, it's not. 
Put it in the oven. It'll take 20 minutes. Go do something else. People just don't plan their days out. We're going to teach you how to become more prepared, and that's what our next workshop is about in two weeks, and you'll get to have some nice samples. Label reading. Well, when you're reading labels, you have to understand we want more things like natural ingredients on there. Because if you're reading things that are chemical based and you don't know what they are, then they're going to be bad for your body. We want to put things in your body that are natural, that your body knows how to break down, that your body knows how to assimilate so that we can use that. And what I want you to do is I want you to check your labels every time you buy things. We've learned the lesson too about you'll buy a hummus and then the next time you'll buy it and then you go home and read it it's like, crap now it's got canola oil in there. Mm -hmm. You'll notice the producers of these foods, they want to use the cheapest oils available. So something that one time might have had olive oil in it, the next time they might have been able to make it cheaper with uh, uh, canola oil and then they didn't save the, or pass the savings out to you, they just passed an inferior product on to you. So it's up to you to read the labels and if you don't like it, to put it back on the shelf. If everyone decided that our hummus needed to be olive oil, um, the people who make the uh, hummus would make it with olive oil. So all you have to do is stop buying the product. That's, it's real simple stuff. Most people, they, they don't think about that. <coughs> Peanut butter versus Nutella. You see those commercials on Nutella? They say Nutella is made from hazelnut. Not true. Nutella is made from sugar and then palm oil. Hazelnut is the third ingredient in Nutella. See how an ingredient label works is the most common thing is number one, the second most common thing. And it just goes on and on and on. Hazelnut, number three. Sugar, number one. That's why you have to read a label. When you look at an organic peanut butter compared to a Nutella, one teaspoon of each, well, one teaspoon of organic peanut butter, it does have sugar in there, but it's a natural sugar. That's okay. There's natural sugar in milk, too. Not a problem with that. In fact, sugar isn't a bad thing. The problem with sugar in something like milk is when they change it, when we take the fat out of milk, and this is where people get confused. If you have skim milk and you have whole milk, what you'll find out is there's more sugar in the skim milk. And the reason being is they've took all the fat, they've taken all the fat out of the skim milk. And if they took all the fat out of there, something else had to be added in there. Something more got left. That's the sugar. So the people that want to lose weight and then they start drinking skim milk, all they're getting is sugar. Do you get that? You need to have fat as part of your diet. When people juice things and they take the juice and they say, well, it's, it's, an, it's an apple or it's an orange. Well, yeah, but an apple or an orange had fiber with it. And when you take in the fiber, our body digests it at a slower rate and then it doesn't affect our insulin level, our blood sugar level. So you think an apple is the same as apple juice. It's not. So you do things that you think are helping, but they're not. So natural sugars are not a bad thing. Nutella? Well, 12 times as much sugar. That's added sugar. How do you know it's added sugar? It showed up right there on the ingredient panel. See, when I look at peanut butter, you'll look at it and the only ingredient in natural peanut butter is going to be peanut butter. The peanuts. The only things in there are peanuts. They didn't add any sugar. When it comes to sour cream, this is a sour cream we buy. 30% milk fat. So when you read the ingredient panel, very clear. Milk, bacterial culture, microbial enzymes, those are the only three things in there. Well, low fat sour cream. Uh, now there's 13 ingredients in there. And let's read a few of them. Modified cornstarch, that's a GMO product. Modified milk ingredients, I don't know what that is. It's modified though, I don't want modified things. Propylene glycol, I know what that is. That's windshield washer fluid. It's in all your diet food. You ever at the, at, at the airport, when you watch them de-ice the planes in the winter? It says it right in the side of the truck. Oh, don't worry, it's safe for it. It's only a little. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they tell you. You need to understand if you didn't buy their product, they'd stop producing it. And you're living in this world where you think if you eliminate fat, you'll get thin. Well, here's why that'll never work. There's three things you can eat. Fat, carbohydrates, and proteins. There's only three food groups you can eat. If you go low fat, now you've got a high carb diet. What happens when you eat more carbs? You put on weight, don't you? 
When you eat carbs, you put on weight. You need to eat a high fat diet. You need to eat very few carbs. And we're going to talk about that at the end, about the advanced diet. If you want to lose weight, it's simple. Start eating fat. And I know that doesn't make sense to you, but it does make sense because fat is good for your body. There's good fats and there's bad fats. You've got to figure that part out. But fat is good for your body. Carbs are horrible for your body. <clears throat> processed sugars, processed foods, breads. I don't care what Oprah says. Not her commercials. I love bread. I eat bread every day. And she sounds like she's in love with bread. She sounds like she's good with bread. And she's going to lose the weight. And guess what's going to happen to Oprah? Anyone have any ideas what happens to Oprah? She's going to gain it back. Yeah, she's going to get it back. She always gains it back. She gains it back every time. She is an incredible person, but I'm not betting on Oprah losing weight. She made $12 million from a tweet, uh, from one tweet last week on bread. It's like she makes money from this stuff. And she's losing it from her willpower. She's not doing it because she told you the right thing. She's just, she won't be able to sustain that. What you have to understand is there's many lies that you're told from a nutrition point of view. And once you understand how you need to eat, not forever, but for a period of time, and then once your body is able to heal better, then you'll be able to handle some of these foods. But wheat is one you really have to watch for. It's in your breakfast, it's in your lunch, it's in your dinner. So you get up and you have cereal, and then you have a sandwich at lunch and you have pasta for dinner. Wee, wee, wee. You can't eat that way. It's not good for you. And then you have to obviously learn how to read labels because when you look at that, it's pretty obvious which one you want to put in your body, isn't it? Yeah. Fat is good for you. Low fat, it's not good for you. Okay, so this is organic peanut butter. Here's the ingredients for you. Organic, roasted, blanched, uh, <laughs> type of, it, it's real simple. It's peanuts. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you another one in, in a few slides that has the, the Skippy peanut butter and we'll compare it and you'll, you'll understand this is what you want to eat. And you look at it, yeah, there's sugars in there, natural sugars. We're not sweating the natural sugars, they're a good thing. And you know what? You're going to hear things about saturated fats. You know what? Saturated fats are awesome. They're better than unsaturated fats. So you've been scared to eat saturated fats. Fats are fine. What you need to be is active in your life. Carbs are the killers. Fats are okay. Strawberry milkshake from Burger King. Now first, they don't call them milkshakes anymore. You know why? There's no milk in it. Yeah, they had to change it to shakes. Now, when you look at this, if you go through all of this, the other thing you'll find out is there's no, there's no strawberries in there too. These are, these are chemically made in a laboratory. And why do you like the taste of them? Because they're chemically made in a laboratory. They know that if you have some, you'll want more. But when you look at the names here, ethyls, butyls, and, and, and long chemical names, you can't have food like this. Do you get that? That's the nutrition panel on a Burger King strawberry milkshake. Can I just interject here? Um, anybody reading any label, you know that the first item always is the most heavily weighted item. So that a meal acetate or whatever that is, all of those things that are chemicals, they have the most weighting in that, uh, that, that particular piece of food. And then all the way down to the one that has the least amount of weight. So you can see that if there is anything in there that's at all real, it might be at the bottom, but all the chemically derived foods that are up there, if you mm -hmm. call them foods, are all at the top. So, you know, the rule is if uh, 90 or 95 percent of the stuff that's at the top doesn't look right to you, you really shouldn't be even considering... Yeah, the first two ingredients is enough for me. Mm -hmm. You look at that and you say, I can't have that. Mm -hmm. You're better off going hungry than having this. Do you understand that? You put this in your body, your body has to break it down, it has to try to get rid of all these chemicals. You're better going hungry than putting something like this in your body. Skippy peanut butter. So this is the comparison to the natural. Now right here, I love this one. It says right here. What's that say? No, no trans fats. Okay, let's see if that's true. Oh, wait a second. How did you need a vegetable oil? That's trans fat. Gee, how did they get away with that? Here's how they got away with it. If there's less than 0.2 grams of trans fat, trans fat, first point, point, the latest is 0.5. All right. Point. I was just looking at the computer today. <laughs> <laughs> if there's less than 0. 0.5 grams of trans fat, then what that means is you can say it's trans fat free. Mm -hmm. So if I'm skipping your crap 
I can simply say, hmm, why don't I make my serving size small? And if I make my serving size, I made trans fats disappear. Do you see how that, uh, that worked? See the magic behind that? It's still there. But they made a deal with the government, and by making that deal, they made it disappear. It's not trans fat free. There's just as many trans fats in there than ever before. Look at the ingredients. Freshly roasted peanuts. Okay, great. A little marketing there. Oh, soybean oil. That's strange. I'd expect peanut oil, wouldn't you? They've taken the peanut oil and they've sold it to someone else. You know why? It's worth more. And then you know what they put in? A crappier oil. A GMO modified cheap oil. But don't worry, now you don't have to stir your peanut butter. It's, it's like, really? This, this is what they try to convince you of. Maltodextrin. Do you know what maltodextrin is? Yeah, it's a sugar. It's corn based sugar. So another GMO sugar. What's the next ingredient? I eat some sugar. I don't think that's a sugar. You know, I'm not an expert, but. Now, that's funny because when you add those two, and they're trying to change the law in Canada on, on the labeling, they want them to have to add all the sugars together. And the reason being is now you've got like the fourth and fifth, uh, no, the third and fourth most common things. My argument is if you add the third and fourth together, that might become the second most or the first. Do you get that? So they're saying, well, it's two different sugars. Yeah, it's icing sugar. Then the hydrogenated vegetable, oil, then salt. And most people, when they look at salt, oh, look at that, my next slide. Here's salt. Did you know the third ingredient in salt was sugar? Right there, invert sugar. You've got to read your labels, guys. First, you've got to buy sea salt or Himalayan salt. But if you're buying table salt or if you go to a restaurant, and I'm like this, we'll go down and we'll, we'll visit our son in St. Catharines, and, you know, we'll go for a brunch and we'll go for some eggs, and you know what? It's going to be pan fried uh, potatoes. And we're going to get toast, we're going to ask for rye, they're going to give us some version of rye, and they're going to have ketchup on the table, but I won't touch the ketchup because it's got high fructose corn syrup in it. Linda, what will you do? I'm not she, She'll have some time. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then I'll look at the salt and I go, I don't know the salt either. Now, I should be bringing it with me. I said, but when we go out for, uh, this is from, from Tuesday, we're going to have some pancakes later. Yes. So when we go out for pancakes, we, we do go out, we, we bring our maple syrup with us. So we do we're the only ones there that have yeah. like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Because we know we're not getting maple syrup, we're getting table syrup, which is horrible, horrible for you. It's filled with high fructose corn syrup. I'm not going to do that. So we walk around with maple syrup like all crazy people. But we read labels. And if you read labels, you stop using the salt on the table because it's bad for you. Third ingredient in salt is sugar. Who knew that today besides me? A couple of people, yeah, that's good. Most people don't free labels. Those of you who pack the uh, craft Lunchable for your kids at school, you can go home and throw them out. There's your, there's your craft Lunchable. I know. There's a lot of bad things in there, isn't it? Didn't they get in trouble like five or ten years? There was something that went wrong with their product, E. coli or something. It's all processed food. It's all processed. You can make that. You could cut the slice of cheese up yourself, boil an egg, cut up a pepperette, put some, you know, rice crackers in there, Mary's rice crackers. You could make your own. It'd be ten times healthier and a third of the price. Our kids used to love lunches like that. They go to school and be like, what, what are you eating? What do you, and they want to trade, of course. You know, they want white, and their kids want to trade because I want your, I want your white bread because I don't see that at home. <laughs> Make a bad deal. Yeah. But you can't let you, and it's like high fructose corn syrup. You know, it's it's in there, and it'll probably be in there three or four other times. So that's a funny thing when you read through these things. It's just it's always in there, and it's in different spots in there. It's it's crazy. Oh, this is a good one. Nutrigrain bar. I love this one with natural and artificial flavors. Wait a second, there's natural flavors and there's artificial flavors. It, if I missed out, could there be any other type of flavors? See, there's only two types of flavors. They mark it and they've said, oh, we're putting whatever we want in there. We'll put whatever we want, all natural stuff and all artificial stuff. And you go, wow, that's great, it's got both. You don't want, you don't want the artificial ones. You probably don't want the natural ones either. Not the raspberry ones. Not the, but tell her what the rat Okay, this is true. It's on the internet, but it was on the natural, um, natural, the natural ranger. Natural health ranger. Natural health ranger. Okay, so they're saying that um, they with natural ingredients, 
it has to be natural, but that doesn't mean it's a natural that you would really want to eat. Okay, so that's the yeah, difference. Most things are in nature, if you think right. about it. Right. So, I mean, for instance, a lot of times if they're going to do red food dye coloring or red food dye, they're squished bugs. There's a certain type of bugs that they squish, and that's ah. what they use to make the dye. So, this is, it's natural, but <laughs> it doesn't mean it's, it's good for you. It mean you want to so, eat it. For raspberries, they're saying that the most commonly flavors, uh, flavoring used for natural, so I mean they're not going to use raspberries to flavor it, it's made from, and I don't understand how the scientists actually found this, but it's from beaver anal glands, and it's secreted, and it's something called castorium, and that is in a lot of foods such as candies and ice creams and cookies and baked goods. And that's what you want to read the ingredient. So, and that's the truth. Believe it or not. Yeah, we can't make. What is it? It's so bad. We can't make stuff like this. Up. So, when you look at processed food, this is why you don't eat processed food. All right. This is why you make things at home yourself. So, especially a lot of. This is a Nutri-Grain bar. When you look at the ingredients on there. High fructose corn syrup, fructose, sugar, maltodextrin. It just goes on and on and on when you start to look at what's in there. You can't put that into your body. That is not a healthy thing to put in there. You need to understand that fats aren't as bad for you as you've been told. You've got to watch your carbs and you have to understand things like MSG, monosodium glutamate, and you've got to stay away from these things because they're bad for you. So if you see long chemical names, MSG has at least 12 different names. So you can go and find them all on the internet. They have different names because people understand you're looking for certain things. And then these people that make these foods, they are trying to get you to buy their product and they're making it with the cheapest things possible. <coughs> Don't buy the processed food. Stay away from them. Just because something is endorsed by uh, the Heart Association doesn't mean it's good for you. It typically means they made a donation. All right? They're not your mother. They're just saying, oh, if you gave us money, we will put your name on our product. Like it's good for you? It's not good for you. This is just, you know, when you go to the uh, athletic villages at the Olympics, McDonald's is there. It doesn't mean it's good for the athletes. That's what you find at the, athletic, at the uh, Olympic villages at, uh, at, the, at the Olympics. It's, it's horrible food, but that's what's, I'm just wondering how, how good some of these athletes really would be if they knew how to eat better if they knew how to stay away from processed food, if they knew that the, the eggs that they were eating at home are not helping their body heal because they're the cheapest products available out there. Uh, we just drove to Linwood on Friday, it was my turn to go, and I got 18 dozen eggs. That was for our family for the next three weeks. So we drive up to Linwood, we used to offer the eggs in the office, then it just became too hard to administer. We had 40 dozen eggs a week that people were picking up. Basically, it was an egg store, and you said, enough of that. You know, and then the eggs would come in small when we get it. All I'd hear is complaints of people all week. My eggs were small. Well, they'll lay down on the table and save your life, you know, and I'm sorry about your small eggs. So, <laughs> so we said, we're not playing that game anymore. Go buy your own eggs, you know? So we went and bought our 18 dozen, and, uh, and that's what we're going to eat for the next three weeks, and then we're going to drive up there and get them again. But these eggs are organic eggs. And we pay three bucks a dozen when we drive up there and we get them. And it's worth it to drive up there for us. So, you know, if you want them, then get in your car and yeah, you'll, it'll take your time, it'll take your gas, but it's better than what you're getting in the grocery store. You look at the color of the yolks on these eggs, it's different. Ours are purple, yours are not purple, I'm sorry. <laughs> Orange, I get my color yeah. Orange and yours are yellow, aren't they? They're, yeah, they're much deeper yeah, yellow. It's, it's a deeper yellow. color. Especially in the summer. Yeah, Lin the Linda eat. laid my clothes out today, so I matched yeah. it. So it's like it's like animals. I have to get the colors right. Yeah. Most toxic ingredients to watch for, high fructose corn syrup, sugar, pesticides. Some things we buy, like at Costco, it's really clear. Um, the mangoes were pesticide free. So, you know, not, not organic, but pesticide free is pretty good. The strawberries were Canadian and they were organic. So we just buy in bulk. So we go up there and I think last time we bought, we bought six bags. They were either 1.5 kilo or two kilo bags. And we'll start every day with a smoothie. So our smoothie is great because our smoothie will have the berries in there. They'll have the organic spinach. They'll have the protein powder. We endorse one protein powder because it's from grass-fed cows from New Zealand. So I know what we're getting. It's not organic, but it's grass-fed. 
All right. So once again, in New Zealand, they're nicer to the environment than we are here. So I know what we're getting. You might get a cheaper one, but your cheaper one might have additives and it might have sugar in it. The protein that we have has no sugar in it. So we don't want to start our day with sugar. We use almond milk in there. Uh, what else do we put in there? Uh, avocados? Sometimes. Sometimes half a banana. So this, that's, that's our breakfast at our place. Now I've just avoided cereal. Last year I had uh, one bowl of cereal. So we just don't have cereal at our place. So we that's something. Still cut oats. Well, steel cut oats is, is way different than cereal. A box of cereal that you pour out with 20 grams of sugar in there. 20 grams of sugar is about four teaspoons, five, sorry, five teaspoons of sugar. So I don't want to start my day with five teaspoons of sugar and then put a glass of orange juice beside it, which is another, I don't know, four uh, teaspoons of sugar, then do something else. Those are things that are bad for you. So what we want to do is we want to eliminate sugar as much as we can, especially high fructose corn syrup. White bread, well, gee, we don't have it in our house. Uh, we have 100% rye bread. Or Costco has a, a nice sprouted organic bread. The sprouted organic bread allows our body to digest it a little bit easier. And it's actually a reasonable price at Costco, isn't it? Yeah, it's very similar to the Ezekiel bread that people would mm -hmm. normally have bought from the health store, um, except it doesn't have soy in it, which is something that a lot of people are trying to avoid even if it is organic. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, if you really... If you're really feeling like you want to have a bread um, that's wheat based, it's not a bad bread to have because one, it is organic, and number two, it is sprouted. Yeah, and, and Oprah, she might be eating a $15 loaf of bread where you might not be. So when Oprah says she eats bread and it's good for her, well, it might not have high fructose corn syrup in it. Almost all of your breads, unless they're organic, are likely going to have high fructose corn syrup in it. And if it's not high fructose corn syrup, it's going to be, it's going to be sugar in there where an organic, if you go to like a veggie hut in Guelph or you can get it at the health food store, it will have like a honey instead. So read, read the ingredients and, uh, and make sure you stay away from the high fructose corn syrup. But when you, once again, you look at the nutrition panel, enriched white flour, that's number one. You know what? I don't want that. It's just not the, we, we don't want to put flour, we don't want to put the wheat into our body. Uh, diet drinks, well, they're filled with excitotoxins. So when we start looking at things like aspartame, and watch the gums that you buy too, because the marketers are pretty smart people. On a gum, it might say it has xylitol on there. But if you don't read it, it might still have aspartame in it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a blend. You say, oh, that's a blend of olive oil and canola oil. Well, the blend might be 95% canola oil and 5% olive oil. Do you see how they use wording? That allows them to do whatever they want. You go, oh, it's a blend. Well, yeah. <laughs> what kind of blend? I don't know. Well, they don't want you to know. They've given you enough information to make you think that you're getting something good. When, when we're done tonight, we've got a sheet here. And these are some common um, fallacies that, uh, that the uh, food producers use to make you think it's better than it is. And then it has the actual wording that it should say. If it was good for you, it would say this. And here's what they say. All right? So that just gives you more ammunition when you go into a grocery store because you go, oh, that, that was whole grains. Well, it said partial whole grains or some whole grains. They'll say multi-grain or, they, um, uh, or they'll say whole, what is the word, nasty, I'm even confused, or made with whole grains. Made but with you whole grains versus whole grain, period. Whole grain. Right? So, yeah. That's kind of like saying um, that uh, a bowl of cereal is, is part of a healthy breakfast. Uh, and, and once again, it's like, well, the cereal isn't really healthy. I could say a bat is, you know, uh, a dead bat is part of a healthy breakfast, but they really should say it's adjacent to a healthy breakfast. It's just sitting there with the healthy breakfast. They get away with the wording there. The cereal wasn't healthy. What might have been healthy was the milk, in their opinion, or the juice, or the whatever, but it wasn't part of it. It was just sitting beside what was considered healthy. But a lot of things you've been lied to, you just believe it's healthy and it truly isn't. It's just filled with sugar and it's processed food. <coughs> GMO products, we pretty much handled those. The soy, the canola, and the corn. Those, you know, and once again, papaya, but most people, that's not uh, the staple you're gonna be eating all the time. But certainly it's the corn and the soy that you need to be aware of nowadays because those are big GMO crops. When it comes to things like flavor packets, mm -hmm. you need to read the ingredients because any processed food is going to have long chemical names in there. You just have to stop reading it. Hey, I was 
brought up on Hamburger Helper. But you know what? It probably wasn't the same as Hamburger Helper nowadays. So it's not like it's going to kill you today or tomorrow. But if you keep eating this way, it's going to be bad for you in the long run. <coughs> All right. The meat and potatoes of things. The maximized living plan. When it comes to the core diet, we're on the core diet predominantly all the time in our family. We go from core to the advanced. The core diet means we eat the good fats and we avoid the bad fats. What would be a bad fat? Any ideas? Yeah, yeah any of the bad oils? Vegetable oils would fit into that category. And a good fat? Olive oil. Olive coconut oil. oil. Coconut oil. oils. Mm -hmm. Nuts, Avocado. seeds, all of those things. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so there's healthy fats, you know, poutine would be a bad fat, all right? <laughs> but, and you can't eat those things. But people think, well, it's a fat, I can eat it. Yeah, every once in a while. You know, I like deep fried wings twice a year. That's it. So I love them. That's why I only have them twice a year, because I understand they're bad for me. So you just don't eat those things. So you have to understand, fat is good for you. Your body gets a lot of calories out of it, but you need to eat the right fats to stay well. When it comes to your proteins, you really need to know your sources. Uh, Linda, did you put that up on the wall? Over here. Yeah, yeah. Linda's posted uh, this on the wall. Bring your smartphone, we'll take a picture of it. There's a couple more posted in the office. This is one, it's a list that we've put together, Linda's put together, where we buy meat and where we buy our chickens. So you can just take a picture and then you can text it off to all your friends, but it'll always be on your phone. The reason why we don't hand the pieces of paper to people all the time is they, they don't even get out of your car when you get home. They stay in your car and you find them six <coughs> months from now. So there's no point in me giving you a piece of paper that you're going to lose. If you want it, we'll give it to you, but take a picture of it. And then call these farms, see what they have. Uh, we found GMO-free chicken last fall. Gee, we were for Country Drive. Went to, we went to one place, ended up going there and buying chicken on the way back. We stopped at uh, this Habitat for Humanity farm in Fergus, and their chicken was a dollar a pound cheaper than what we just paid. So it was two ninety five a pound, and it was GMO-free. So we said to buy the full bird. free range. And free range. So we bought like 14. So we have like, what, we have three freezers now? Maybe four. <laughs> <laughs> we have one at the office of three homes, so we have a lot. But you don't have to do that. But if you bought <coughs> the food like this, it would be better for you. So yeah, we don't want to buy the chicken. We don't buy chicken from the grocery store. We'll go to Hilltop and Poultry Place in a pinch. But we understand there, it's going to be antibiotic free, but it's not going to be GMO free. And who cares that A&W has humanely treated animals or antibiotic free? Then you're going to take this chicken and slap it on a high fructose corn syrup bun and eat a bunch of fries and wash it down with a Coke there. Do you really think that was a, a good meal? See, they're trying to get you to buy in on it. it's okay. It's okay. We've done okay with this. It's like fast food isn't okay. It's bad for you. If you eat it, you'll get sick in the long run. Just to add to that, when we're talking about free range, a lot of people will say, oh, it's free range, right? So here's the definition of free range. According to Health Canada, free range does not define the amount, the duration, and the exposure to outdoors. They just have to have been exposed to the outdoors at some point. So I suppose it doesn't mean you even went outside. Yeah, they have to, like say for example, you might have a hundred chickens in a small area and there might be a little access door with some light. That would be considered free range. Okay, so don't be fooled. Um, and this is the point of when you get out and you go out to the country, you might meet some farmers and you can exactly yeah, find you can see their operations. Like. You know, when we were at this Habitat for Humanity farm, he did say that there there is some stipulation about allowing um, the actual meat chickens to be out everywhere, but they have a they have a confined area that's open, so it's like a, a big cage where they can move around. Um, but the laying hens, they're out everywhere. They were just running around out in the back, mm -hmm. right? And they eat from the ground. and They have a natural habitat. That's a real different form of free range mm -hmm. than what. Yeah. Most of these places are doing, and that's only five percent in Canada are actual um, out of the are out of the shoe boxes and allowed to roam. Humanely treated, yeah, I have to treated. say, five percent. We we read anywhere from ten to five to ten percent. Yeah, and we talked about this with the organic chicken too. I have a chicken farmer, and he has a farm. Um, he's got like twenty thousand chicks, and they start every six weeks or something. I got six or seven weeks, and uh, it's. 
organic sometimes if I sometimes the organic it'll grow and sometimes it's just the normal conventional but it's organic inhumanely treated chicken it's, it's not not really organic it's in the same building all they do is give it organic feed and they only grow them to a certain size when you go to Costco you'll notice the organic chickens there are really small that's because if they grow them any larger they'll get sick because you've got 20,000 birds all in a confined area that have never been allowed to go outside. So when you buy these organic chickens from, you know, the President's Choice and all, it's organic, inhumanely treated chicken, just so you know. In most cases, unless oh, it's larger. Unless it's in a larger every bird, right? Case. So. Yes. <laughs> but that just goes back to what Jeff said earlier that um, things will change if you actually tell or ask the um, people at the grocery stores, at the market, whatever, and you're saying, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this. And eventually, I mean, now we do, we can actually find places. Years ago, you could. So um, the more you're vocal, the more you tell people or farmers or people in the food chain what you want, things will move. They're moving slowly, but they are moving in the right direction as far as available. Yeah, a lot of farmers feel forced to do something because that's the way they can make money, but if they knew they could make money by growing organically and they'd be able to sell to people, <coughs> they'd do that too. They care about nature. They care about the animals. The people that are in the, the large places, the confined animal feed operations, they don't care about the animals. They don't care about the workers. They care about the profit. So just watch it when you're in a model that's only about supporting the, the, the producer making the product as cheap as possible, then you will end up with a cheap product. Well, McDonald's, Burger King, and Tim Hortons yeah. wouldn't be going to free range eggs if people weren't asking. Yeah, but they're never going to go to the chicken. They were clear on that. McDonald's is one of those things that would cost too much to fix it, and, and they're never going to fix McDonald's. So stop buying that. <coughs> Carbohydrates. You want to stay away from the refined carbs, and you want to eat more vegetables. When people get heavy, they did not get there from eating vegetables. So the solution to getting thin is to eat vegetables. It's the processed food. And to say I'm going to eat less processed food, my suggestion is just don't eat processed food. I don't eat processed food. I haven't eaten it for years. It's just it's something that we don't put into our body. It's not good for us. The advanced diet. The advanced diet gets a little more complicated. This is not for the, the weak of heart. When you go on the advanced plan, and we've been on this several times, you eliminate all grains and all sugars. And I'll tell you what, most people are sugar addicts. You know, I am Jeff, I'm a sugar addict. <laughs> and the thing is, I can control sugar now. Drinking care of my macchiatos from Starbucks. Man, I look forward to lunchtime. We don't want to lunchtime. And I go in and get my hit. And then I would have that. And then when I finally went on a grain-free, sugar-free diet, about day five into it, I was shaking in bed like a heroin addict. I said, like, what's going on with me? Well, my body's coming off of sugar because I haven't given it to my body. Then I went back to Starbucks one time. Never again. It was the worst drink ever in the world. But before, it was the greatest drink in the world. Once someone takes away your craft peanut butter and gives you the natural peanut butter, the first week with the natural peanut butter, you're like, what's wrong with this stuff? Yeah, it is like, well, it's horrible. Then a week later, you go, oh, it's the perfect. It's the way it's supposed to taste. You are a sugar addict. You just don't understand you're a sugar addict. That's the problem with being an addict. You don't get it. So, and just to take away your sugar and start eating more bread, that's just another form of sugar. All right? So you have to go grain free. Linda's got some great grain free recipes uh, for breads on our website that, that we've made and she's made. That, yeah, they're a little more work. That's why when someone says, I'm going to go grain free and sugar free, I say, well, then be prepared. So you have to have some meals pre-cooked. You have to have these things ready because you're just not going to go over there and open up your pantry and see everything that you need. You have to plan for these things. Where the core diet, eating better and just saying, well, I'm going to buy my meat somewhere else. I'm not going to buy meat from the grocery store and I'm going to source those things out. We buy meat and we always get frozen meat. I know people like fresh meat, but you know what? Tough. Frozen meat, it works. So we can get organic steaks for $6, $8 a pound. That's what it works out to. And that's a great price. All they have to do is take it out of the fridge the day before, and then it falls. Okay? It's just, that's the way the model works. It's just better for you. So we're going to eliminate the grains, but when we eliminate the grains, we need to increase the amount of fat and protein in our diet because you still need calories to survive. But your calories are going to be avocados, they're going to be nuts, they're going to be seeds, they're going to be things that are healthy for you that you're just not accustomed to eating. And then once you do that, you'll not miss the grains and actually your blood sugar levels will be a lot more stable and you won't get the hunger pangs that most people get. So getting started, uh, some advice to you is start with smoothies. Avoid the grains in the morning. 
our lunch in, in our office is usually um, a salad, chicken breast, egg, avocado, some shredded cheese on there, some simple things, and dinner could be a bunch of things. A lot of slow cooker meals. And, you know, we're not afraid of meat. People tell you meat is bad for you. Uh, bad but there meat. is a balance. We have yeah. a lot of vegetables. Yeah, there is. There's we're a not lot just of eating protein meat. You're making it appear that way because he loves his meat. But <laughs> meats aren't bad for you. There are bad meats out there. You have to understand that. That barbecuing isn't bad. Barbecuing a bad piece of meat probably is bad for you. So there is certainly a difference between the two things. Some budgetary ideas. The most important thing that people really should look at when they're looking at changing their diet is buying the meat. That is going to be the biggest impact. You know, going organic with your vegetables is nice, but you got to understand if you're eating hamburger that came from the grocery store, it took about eight pounds of grain to produce one pound of hamburger. So you're going to get the pesticides, you're going to get the effect of the grain in your meat. That's why I would say fix your meat first. Because if you fix your meat and get the organic meat and the better meat, then your body is going to work a whole lot better because you're not exposing it to the bioaccumulation effect of the cow eating it and then you eating the cow. So source these things out. We've got a sheet up here. Make some phone calls and in the next couple of weeks to couple of months, work towards it. The Dirty Dozen is just a list of 12 fruits and vegetables that uh, have the most toxins sprayed on it. We have a list up front if you're interested. If not, just go to the Environmental Working Group. They have that list on their website. And they also have the Clean 15. Those are 15 fruits and vegetables with so little pesticides on there. It truly, it doesn't matter. So you don't have to buy everything <coughs> organic. And then, uh, and then once again, um, I'm going to show a video in a second. But before I show my video, uh, I got a question for you. And what, when I ask this question, you know, raise your hand. But you don't have to raise your hand slowly. Raise your hand or don't raise your hand. It's totally up to you. And my question is, has to do with, um, and, and um, when you raise your hand or don't raise your hand, please don't think, I wonder if I'm offending someone else by offending, and by raising my hand or not raising my hand. And the reason I talk about this is, I, I've got a, a show on Faith FM, and we try to teach people to, to step out of their comfort zone. Instead of being in that, uh, that real comfortable area that a lot of Christians find ourselves in. Christians were never really comfortable in, for, for centuries. So it's about becoming who you are. So my question that I'd love to ask you is, who in the room here is a Christian? Good. You know, almost everyone. The hands did. There's not a lot of hesitation. The hands went up. Great. All right. Now, we've bought into some pretty crazy things when you think about it. We've bought into the Virgin Mary, which seems, you know, kind of crazy to some people. Uh, immaculate conception, death on a cross, resurrection, life everlasting. You know, you look at all these things and you look at them and they're kind of way out there for some people. And then I put on a nutrition talk and people are like, yeah, I don't know if I believe in changing my chicken. And it's like, <laughs> what else did you just believe in? Like, uh, I'm saying, the truth is the truth. You know, there's a certain point in your life where you have to look at that and say, yes, the chicken is bad. And I have to find a better place to buy my chicken. And if you do that, you'll become a healthier person. When we look around this world, there's more drugs, there is more antibiotics. There's In the United States, according to the Washington Post, 59% of the adults in the United States are on one medication. 59%. And if you get into um, five or more medication, 15%. That's about one in six Americans are on that many medications to stay alive. My last pill was when I was 26. That was 26 years and five months ago. If I can go 25 years, 26 years and five months without an aspirin, anyone else can do it. You just have to eat better than what you used to eat. And then your body stays well. You weren't made to be sick. Health is the normal state. And once you understand that, you're going to be healthy. I saw the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl was okay. But I'm going to show you a video in a second, and this was um, from the NFL Awards show the night before. I don't know if you saw it, but this was a chilling video. This was probably one of the best communicators I've ever seen. His name is uh, Anquan Bolton, and let me pull it uh, up here. So he, was, he won the uh, Walter Payton Award, which has to do with um, 
volunteering and, and helping the community. So let's just see if it fires up here. Good. Videos are always the unpredictable thing, the wild card. Looks promising. by my fellow Man of the Year recipients here tonight, and we are thrilled to welcome to this fraternity the 2015 Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year, Anquan Bolden. That was Eli Manning, he lost. Thank you. Um, first off, I would like to thank the NFL uh, and the Peyton family, uh, Brittany, uh, Miss Connie, and Jared, uh, for voting me in. Um, you know, I, I've had the chance over the last two years to, to get to know the Peyton family. And what a great family. Um, I love what they do in the community and how they carry on uh, Walter Peyton's legacy. I also like to thank uh, Dan, and Joanne uh, of the 49ers for their tireless work um, and helping me do everything that I'm able to do uh, through my foundation. I know I'm here uh, receiving this award, but there should be a line of people um, standing alongside of me because my foundation doesn't work uh, without them. So I'd like to thank my entire board uh, for everything that they do, um, all the hours that they put in, and they do it all from the heart. None of them get paid. Um, they do it because that's what they want to do. Um, I like to thank my, my partner in crime, uh, my backbone, my wife, um, who's been there since day one, um, helping me do everything that I need to. You know, I, I played this game, um, just finished up my 13th season. And when I first got into the NFL, man, nobody can tell me anything. I was living life. You know, I had achieved my dream of, of one day making it to the NFL. But I soon realized that's not what life is all about. Um, I realized that my purpose in life wasn't to make it to the NFL and to score touchdowns. Um, God put me on this earth for something much bigger than that. And I realize and understand what my purpose is now. And that's to honor God in everything I do on the field, off the field. So, you know, it's my prayer, my hope that, you know, I can live out the rest of my life honoring God. Um, I can help as many people as possible. Um, and once again, I'd just like to say thank you um, to the NFL and, and to the Peyton family for this, this tremendous honor. Yeah, like I said, after watching that, that was uh, the show that, you know, half an hour before the game started. The way he walked up there, his presence, that was like two or three minutes of the most powerful speaking I've seen. And he's a football player. And I didn't expect anything from him. And I walked up there and just his calmness and his coolness. And then he's, he's helping people more than he could with a football. So you have to go home and you have to help other people. You have to eat better. You have to stay well. Me telling you what to do doesn't mean anything <coughs> until you understand you have to make these choices yourself. And if you make more choices, you're going to be healthier. And if you do that, you get to enjoy a longer, healthier life. But the reason why we help people in the office it's not to get them in here and to put them under care. It's to teach them that God's put a power inside your body. And if I get you to take better care of yourself, the quality of your life is going to be better. Where most other people wait around until they're sick and then they try to fix themselves. That model doesn't work. The food that you're eating is not as good as it should be. Start making the changes and then over the next several months or year, your whole life will change. It's taken us years to get to this point, but now it's easy to make the changes. You have the freezers, you know where to buy stuff, you know what's good, you know what's bad. We don't eat perfect all the time, we don't have to eat perfect. We have to eat better 
than we used to. And then we have to try to get better and better at it. You have to read your labels and you have to understand that the people buying or people selling you food, they're lying to you in many ways. So you have to look through that and then find better sources. Does that make sense? Good. Next talk, there's a clipboard that's gone around. If you signed up, that's great. The next talk is a recipe night. You get to sample some of the foods and we're going to show you how to make your time in the kitchen more efficient. How to cook ahead, how to make sure that when you come home, you're not cooking for that night. You're cooking for two days from now or you've done your cooking on the weekend. It's simple once you grasp it. And then once you do it, your life becomes so much better. That gives you more time with the kids, more time to work out, more time to do what you want. And yet you can eat better if you do it that way. Great. Thank you. Anybody have questions for Dr. Duff? Is there anything you need to explain? I'm interested, you said you picked up 18 dozens of eggs. Yeah. Now, you won't be eating 18 dozens of eggs in three yeah. weeks, will you? Yeah. You will? Oh, yeah. Oh, probably. Yeah. Um, we have a son that uh, will send a few to. Adam probably gets up every day and has four eggs. Yeah, we'll have three or four eggs three or four times a week. Uh, we're not worried. So we're better off putting protein in our body than protein and carbs. So we, we, eat, we eat a lot of eggs. 18 dozen, however, I thought you were... How, because they only last for so long, right? So well, yeah, first off, when you go to the store and you buy them, they're probably yeah. close they're probably to three weeks old, or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. well, not yeah, okay, so that, that's my So question. when we get them, they're but very fresh. Okay. Right, yeah. so... Um, they have a bit of extra time. Okay. Yeah. You know, and we'll use it for some baking. Yeah. I might make frittatas, so with a frittata, I'm using eight eggs, and, you know, I'll make a few of those for yeah, dinner. And they, yeah. the, and they go in the freezer. When we freeze things, just so you know, um, we do use saran wrap, but instead of putting saran wrap around something, we'll have cut out a piece of uh, parchment paper or wax paper and put it on top, and then we use the saran wrap. Now we're keeping the saran wrap off our food. So we're not like against the Ziploc stuff. The Ziploc stuff is great. We just won't expose our, our meat or our food to it. We'll wrap it in something. So if we're making burgers, for example, we have a burger thumb where we made about 72 burgers. Uh, a while ago. We yes, we cook them up. And then, and then we'll, we'll yeah. take them and we'll fold them into a bag and then we'll put them in the Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. So the first bag that goes around it is wax paper, you know, relatively mm -hmm. cheap, cheaper than parchment paper. And then it goes in the Ziploc bag and then it gets sealed. Mm -hmm. Now it's mm -hmm. airtight, but my burger didn't touch the, the plastic. Do you get that? Well, the reason for that, I'm sure most of you are aware, a lot of plastics have a yeah. lot of fat things on so, you know, um, the longer it's exposed to it, the more it can absorb it. So, I mean, if you're just putting your plastic, your sandwich in a plastic bag for an hour or two, it's probably not going to yeah, be an issue, be okay. if, as long as you're not heating it. Mm -hmm. But when we're putting it in a freezer for a certain amount of time, then we'll do that. Are there certain grains that are better than others? We would go with a, a, a steel-cut oatmeal is a, is a better choice. Uh, if we go with uh, wheat, it's going to be organic, but it's going to okay, be more... For example, a lot of people are eating quinoa. Quinoa is good, but I, I'd say vary your grains, right? Don't have just one grain. I mean, if you're going to have a rice, you're going to want to have a, you're going to have a brown rice, and you want to have a, a whole grain brown rice because we don't want the bran taken off. A lot of times when you're getting your white rice, it's been polished, all the good stuff, the nutritional part has been taken off. Um, grains, if you can, and we don't always do that, or but if you can get them sprouted, um, sprouted and dried is the best because the sprouted actually brings out, um, it, it helps your body absorb the nutrients more and the sprouting actually adds more nutrients to it. So, I mean, there's there's millet, there's uh, which people don't really know about. Um, there's um, your your rices, there's your quinoa, there's your, your barley. We have a yeah. variety, but yeah, yeah, stay away from stay away from wheat because it's going to be in many of your other foods that you can't control. Yeah, wheat has been hybridized so much, and if you've read anything, um, uh, what's that? Wheat belly. Wheat belly. Yes. Um, your, your whole grain, not your whole grain, but your whole wheat bread toasted will actually affect your sugar levels more than a chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't eat a chocolate bar either. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't substitute yeah. that for breakfast. There was another study recently that said exercise doesn't add to your life. It's like, really? Like, you see these studies that come out every once in a while. It's like, really, guys? Someone's just trying to 
let you know that you now have an excuse not to do what you know you're supposed to do. So you're smart enough to know you have to exercise. You're smart enough to know processed food will kill you. You just have gotten away with it, and now you think you can keep doing it. It's like, well, you can't. In the long run, it will get you. So stop doing it now, and you'll be a healthier person in the future. You'll be a healthier person next week. You'll notice differences. Right, and, and the government's not going to do it for you. We all think yeah. that Health Canada is going to protect us. And as we read, 95% of the chickens are sitting in shoe boxes yeah, in care. a barn. And basically, a question to you. Uh, before it was recommended not to have more than three eggs per week. Yeah. That was it. Not the yeah, I know. It, once again, it, once I know it was man's. It was man's idea. And when you look at the the, the, the food chain table, and all of this stuff, we need pork. Who said that? The pork producers. You need milk. Who said that? The milk producers. So everyone wants a say in it. Eggs are not bad for you. God did not make a mistake and say, oh, I shouldn't have put the yolk in there. So that is a whole food. Now, if you're trying to cut weight, you know, uh, the whites are a good way to go. If you're into bodybuilding, then you stay away from the, the, the yolk. But no, it is perfectly fine. People have just told you things. They've told you fat makes you fat. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a series of lies. They're not right. Yeah, the eggs are fantastic for you. They're not going to drive your cholesterol up through the roof. And cholesterol has nothing to do with health and sickness. You heard it from me first. You know what? People think cholesterol is uh, if we need to lower it. You don't need to lower your cholesterol. You need to exercise it and eat properly. But cholesterol doesn't kill people. Your diet kills you. Your lifestyle kills you. It's not cholesterol. Ever. Any other questions? Then you may go. <laughs> I did a radio show where it was a doctor's report at 5.30. And then <laughs>